Socialism or Secession by the Southern Avenger. One of my favorite things to learn about Sarah Palin was her ties to the Alaskan Independence Party, a group that wants their state to secede from the United States. Said the group's late founder, Joe Vogler, quote, The fires of hell are frozen glaciers compared to my hatred for the American government. Palin's husband had been a member of the Alaskan Independence Party for over a decade, and the vice presidential candidate herself addressed the secessionist group last spring, advising them to, quote, keep up the good work. I spent my early 20s as a member of the League of the South, a conservative group of modern-day Southern secessionists who believe their Confederate ancestors had the right idea. The League of the South is still active today, and they're not alone, reports the Los Angeles Times, quote, in 2007, a small group of delegates to the second North American Secessionist Convention, the first was in Burlington, Vermont in 2006, met in Chattanooga, Tennessee to discuss how to foment the collapse and destruction of the United States of America. Under banners such as the Republic of Cascadia in Oregon and Washington, Independent California, the United Republic of Texas, the League of the South, and the Second Vermont Republic. Pretty radical stuff, right? Perhaps, but no more radical than our founding fathers. The U.S. was born of secession when leaders from the 13 American colonies decided that they should separate themselves from their British masters. As the United States creeps closer towards socialism, a trend aided and abetted by both major parties, might it be time to consider separating ourselves from our masters in Washington, D.C.? In the wake of the socialist bailout bill, Hugo Chavez said of our president, quote, They say Chavez is regulating prices. He is violating the laws of the marketplace. They say the state should not get involved in that, but now they don't criticize Bush for having to nationalize the biggest banks in the world. Comrade Bush, how are you? Added the Venezuelan dictator, quote, Comrade Bush is heading towards socialism. Chavez is right. The small, limited, locally controlled, states rights American style of government outlined in our Constitution simply doesn't exist anymore. What does exist is a gargantuan, centralized government that controls virtually every aspect of our cultural, political, and economic lives. Both the Republicans and Democrats brought us to this point thus far, and recently succeeded in pushing us head first into full-blown socialism. Chavez and his friends Fidel and Raul Castro in Cuba are old hardline communists who still believe socialism is the wave of the future. Last week, our president, John McCain, Barack Obama, and other leaders from both parties helped to prove them right. But is radical decentralization or secession necessary? Writes the LA Times' Christopher Ketchum, quote, The dominant idea among the delegates at the North American Secessionist Convention was that the U.S. experiment had failed. It had become impractical, tragically ridiculous. Its leaders and institutions bought off, hoard out, unaccountable and unanswerable to the needs of citizens. The United States would have to be reborn smaller, and our loyalties realigned to the needs of localities if the American dream was to survive. Considering where mainstream politics and mainstream politicians have taken this country, it might be worth taking a look beyond the moderate, comfortable political center. The solutions offered by the various limited government secessionist groups that litter the political fringes certainly aren't any more ridiculous than those offered by Republicans and Democrats. In a nation born of secession and whose founding heroes were all diehard secessionists, such considerations should not be a stretch. They weren't for Todd Palin or his wife. The truly extremist position would be to keep doing what we've always done, by placing our trust in the same leaders who are forever pushing America toward the abyss. Many experts, both home and abroad, believe the collapse of the U.S. stock market represents an end to the American dream and the beginning of a socialist nightmare. As long as Washington, D.C. continues to control the entire country, this may be true. But it doesn't have to be, as many Americans, living in many different Americas, could more easily pick up the pieces, one piece at a time.